Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of the Ohio Guys here. I'm Christian Ocampo and today I'm being joined by a special guest. We have none other than Stephen O. Young. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing very well. How about you? I'm doing great. Thank you for uh, joining us for your interview. We are very excited for this one. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. So, we have a few questions we'd like to ask you. Uh, first of all, what is it like working in the industry today? Uh, well, I have to say this, it's never been a better time, I think, to work in the industry. You know, uh, I do think uh, that there are more roles for uh, more uh, people uh, of, of every kind of category. Uh, especially being Asian American, uh, now is definitely the best time. I mean, I've been in this business for like well over 10 years, something like that, starting out with like, uh, you know, live shows, theme park stuff, whatever. And even back then, it felt like, uh, you know, representation, inclusion, all of that diversity, it was like, it felt like uh, an impossible dream. But now you're seeing a lot of different doors opening up with a lot of different movies, a lot of different indie things going on. Uh, yes, so that is the good thing. As far as the rest, it's like it's all the same story. This business is all about patience and hustle and grit <laughs> and taking no, learning how to take no for for an answer and, and just not quitting. You know, so it can be tough, but I always say. The highs are so high and the lows are so low. You know, when you're feeling bad, man, you feel bad. When you're feeling great, when you book that job, it is amazing. So, uh, dreams do come true uh, in this business. All right. So I'm actually glad things are going well for you. <laughs> Hope you yeah, Hope you I'm totally that. lucky. I'm lucky out. It's crazy. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. I never thought it'd be like this. <laughs> All right, so another question we'd like to ask you. What is your favorite project you have worked on? Uh, okay, favorite project I've worked on. Can I talk about the most recent one? Yes. You can, yeah. Or, okay, that. okay. It's up to you. I mean, simple answer, and we'll talk about it later, obviously, Spider-Man for PS4. That is definitely all-time favorite. Uh, uh, I feel like I peaked. I'm a little bit scared because I'm like, oh, I don't know if there's any other project that can get... Any better than this. Uh, you know, I hope so. I hope I have a long career ahead of me. But this is definitely the best project I've ever worked on. For sure. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Uh, Sam, your earlier voiceover work. What was it like working on uh, Star Wars, The Old Republic? Ah, yes. <laughs> right. So, I actually did the cinematics, like the cinematic trailers for a lot of those Star Wars, uh, Old, Old Republic uh, commercials and uh, cutscenes, uh, all the ones that were made by Blur Studio, headed by Tim Miller, uh, directed by Dave Wilson. Uh, I got those through my buddy, Phil Severa, who was a stunt coordinator over there. Uh, so I, and, you know, anytime they kind of needed a guy with lightsaber, whatever, whatever, I was in a perfect position back then uh, when they came out to do it. And my buddy brought me on. So, like, the one big one that we started with was the, I think it was the second Old Republic cinematic uh, cutscene trailer where it was like that, like, Darth Maul-looking Jedi with the, whatever, the two lightsabers, one with a double edge, one with a single. And so I did the motion capture for that guy. Uh, and, yeah, that was, that was pretty huge at the time. Uh, I was working on 47 Ronin in England uh, with Keanu Reeves, that Ooh. crazy samurai movie way back in 2008 or 9 or whatever. And uh, I remember when the cinematic dropped, like just people were on set going, uh, it was funny, that some of the people on set, uh, producers, directors, whatever, they, they actually came up to the stunt team and were like, you need to make this fight look like this video. <laughs> it's like, I know that video because I did that. So, yeah, that was pretty surreal. And it's amazing working on any Star Wars project, frankly. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, very lucky. Uh, obviously, another buddy of mine, Liang Yang, who's a very famous uh, Chinese-British stunt guy, um, did an amazing fight in Mission Impossible 6. Uh, he brought me on to, you know, do, do some stunts for Rogue One. Uh, he brought me on to help train Adam Driver in, in you know, lightsaber work for uh, The Force Awakens. Uh, because basically Adam Driver needed, you know, he needed a, a sword dummy to, <laughs> to fight against in New York before, you know, when he was prepping. So I was very lucky to kind of be uh, in that world for sure. And it's, it's totally, again, kind of like Spider-Man. It's surreal where I was asked this, what, three, four years ago? Like, what would be your dream project? And four years ago, I had said, if I'm on any kind of Star Wars movie, even if I'm like doing a uh, coffee service, if I'm giving snacks up, you know what I mean? If I'm giving Skittles to people, whatever, if I'm giving peanuts to people, I will be, I will, I will be happy. I'll retire. You know, and then like something like two years later or something, uh, you know, I was on Rogue One. I was helping out on Force Awakens. So, um, definitely very surreal. And it's just weird walking around being a, in your Stormtrooper outfit, walking on set, and there's other Stormtroopers, and you guys are all doing an action scene, and everybody under the helmets are going, pew, 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 like doing laser sound effects. It's hilarious. It's a bunch of grown people. You know, running around, living out their childhood dreams. Very lucky. Oh, definitely. It's Star Wars. I mean, what more can you ask? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. All right. Uh, next question. Another voice role you did. What was it like working on The Elder Scrolls Online? Ah, yes. So, again, so with Elder Scrolls, I was doing a mocap for uh, the big Nord. Uh, for, I think it was like three cinematics that Blur did. Uh, so it was the Viking guy fighting uh, the Briton, which is like the ninja dude. Uh, and that was awesome because I was able to kind of be a little bit wilder, be a little bit crazier, uh, instead of, you know, trying to be so fancy, so light on my feet. I could just be crazy. I could be insane. And coming up with, uh, I think it was the, second trailer, because there was three, either the second or the third part, it was the more fighting the burden. That was me and my buddy, Berto, um, Gutierrez. We just, you know, we rehearsed that, came up with that choreo arts. And Gabe Wilson, the director, was so cool. He was getting every cool idea. Uh, uh, and he obviously had, you know, interesting of the cool ideas, too, that we incorporated. It was just fun to yeah. And to see those videos, see the post cinematics still floating up, uh, six, seven years later, there are some cases of this. It's crazy to me that, uh, I can use the word crazy a lot because it just, you just don't expect that. It's got staying power. So I'm, I feel very fortunate. <laughs> All right. Uh, another question. That I would like to ask you, what was like working on uh, Destiny 2? Ah, oh, Destiny 2 was so fun. And again, that was another Blur project. But that led into uh, working for, you know, for the actual game itself, too. Like, any time they kind of needed some of the bigger cinematics. Like, spoiler alert, Death of K, you know, Death of K6, all of that. Uh, when they approached me, you know, I had an audition for the director, Kevin, for at Blur, because they said, we need somebody who can kind of match up with uh, Nathan Fillion's voice and kind of have his swag in his body. Uh, but obviously, he's got a robot face, but we still need to see perfect lip syncing, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I was like, okay, you know. So they gave me, uh, you know, some footage to look at, and I said, okay, yeah, I mean, the K6 needs you know, gunslinger guy with attitude. So I auditioned, they loved it. You know, we did the first two spots commercially, which were, uh, uh, which one, uh, Last Call, right? Where I also played the sweeper robot at the end. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then, you know, uh, the the big commercial where it's the, the Kate giving the big speech 
Uh, and he does it just so fun. He, I, I memorize Nathan Fillion's speeches. I memorize his, his cadence. I memorize his rhythm. And then we just go and we play. And the fun thing about, obviously, Nathan Fillion is he's hilarious. He could read a box of cereal and make it hilarious <laughs> and uh, interesting. So that was super fun for me. And then that, of course, led to the, the live action Destiny 2. Uh, oh, we're going to import connection, sorry. Uh, that led to the live action Destiny 2 commercial directed by uh, the director who did um, King Kong Skull Island. Uh, mm-hmm. And also the upcoming, uh, the upcoming Metal Gear movies, right? So that was incredible, too. Uh, you know, go out to Detroit in this giant uh, abandoned warehouse that they built this futuristic set with a real craft spaceship, and you have all the people in their real, uh, you know, armor, and you have Kate Six's real outfit with a real robot helmet that has actual animatronic moving electrical parts created by, you know, the staff at uh, Legendary, Legendary, which did Iron Man you know, and Terminator and all these other big movies. So to be able to go to the shop, I mean, obviously 90% of the fun is performing, but, you know, 10% of the fun is just being behind the scenes too. Uh, it feels like Disneyland. You're just, yeah, I was just like so happy to be there. Like, I can't believe I'm seeing all the secret stuff, you know, in the workshop. So yeah, Cake 6 also totally cool because, again, uh, say what you will about Destiny and, and, and Bungie or whatever, but that's a huge franchise. And well, those cinematics themselves, they, they keep, people keep watching them. So super, super cool to be in. All right. So now we come to the question that everyone wants to know about. Yeah, sure. What was that? We can Am I single? Yes. <laughs> Ladies, what's up? No, what's up? Spider-Man, uh, the video game on PS4. Yeah. Yes. Yes, biggest, I mean, fastest selling uh, PS4 game in Sony's history uh, so far, you know. Uh, there's been a lot of amazing games that have come out, God of War uh, and, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2 will come out, you know. So, to be in, so cheesy, right? To even be in the same category is an honor, but it's true, it really is. And I never, you know, when I auditioned for this role three and a half years ago, like, I had no idea it was going to be this huge. I didn't even know it was going to be a Spider-Man video game. So they just said, hey, we need, uh, we need a really bad, you know, mean, scary Asian dude, right? <laughs> Speaks Chinese. I was like, <laughs> knows Kung Fu. I was like, we can do all that. But, but handsome. I was like, <laughs> a score, yes, right? Uh, charming. I was like, I can do all that. Uh, but yeah. So I go into the audition, have no idea what it's for. And then, you know, at the end, they're kind of like, well, it's for, it's for Spider-Man. So I was like, oh, I don't want to get my hopes up, right? Uh, and then they said I got the job. And I was like, yes, awesome. And then I didn't hear from them. I did like a face scan a couple months later. And then I didn't hear from them for like eight months, something like that. So I was like, oh, clearly the projects, nah, it was probably just a test thing or whatever. But it turns out they were already busy you know, working for a year on all these other scenes, all these other whatnots. So then they called me again, and they said, okay, we're ready to do this. And then it was like two years of, of just working on the game. And I met amazing people, super, and I was able to work with cool friends of mine. Uh, and every day was just, I, I sound like a broken record, but every day was fun, you know? Uh, and come on, man, I'm beating up Spider-Man? And getting beat up, sure, whatever, but <laughs> mostly beating up Spider-Man. Like, I think one of the first things that we did was uh, the train sequence for uh, for Mr. Negative versus Spider-Man. And, you know, that was so fun because they were like, okay, now here we need you to do something to Spider-Man. You're kind of winning. So, <laughs> and, and they're so, you know, everybody at Insomniac, uh, Brian, Bobby, the two Brians, <laughs> Bobby, like, uh, Jacinda, they're, they're just so, the, the spirit of collaboration is amazing, you know. Uh, all the level designers, uh, they're willing to hear what you have to say because they all want to make it as cool as possible. 
So even when it comes down to fight choreography, like myself, normally if you're on a film, it's like, okay, you got to wait for the fight choreographer or you have the director tell you what to do. Uh, but they were so amenable to the performer's ideas. So if I was like, well, okay, I think here I feel like I just want to punch Spider-Man right in the face two times, uh, give him a left hook, they're like, yeah, that looks good, obviously. And, uh, you know, we did it, and it's amazing. So, super cool. What else do you want to know about Spider-Man? I, I could talk about this all day. I'm going to ride this till I'm going to ride this to the ground, man. <laughs> Where else you want? We're all ears. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, being Mr. Negative, right, uh, to be the first person where you see the face, and it's a real face. Obviously, there was the cartoon and the Lego video game as well, but for them to, to take my face, I, I just thank Jacinda and everybody at Marvel so much that they were, they were okay with my face, you know. Uh, I think that is a huge thing for me as an actor because, you know, I can get recognized. I mean, I went to an audition the other day. I was on a lot, and some guy was looking at me from, uh, from far away. Obviously, it was my competition. He had just left the, the audition, so I'm looking at him through my sunglasses. He's looking at me, and I'm like, is this dude trying to throw down? Why does this guy keep staring at me? Do I know him? <laughs> oh, man, you're going to get it. If you keep looking at me this way, son, you're going to get it. I pass him. I'm like, okay, there's nothing. Stand down at ease. And then I hear Steven, and I turn around, and I'm like, uh huh, dude. And I immediately, you know, I'm so hard. And then he says my name, and I immediately turn around because I'm so fake. I'm like, huh, hey, what's up? Yeah, hi. Do I know you? And he's like, yeah, I just want to say, you did great in Spider Man. And that was the first time in my life anyone, I mean, I performed for many years, but that was the first time anyone knew my name <laughs> and knew my name to the face. Because a lot of times they'd say, oh, you're the guy, whatever, whatever. You're that guy, or you're a guy. Or are you that Asian guy? Or are you Brad Pitt? Uh, no, I'm not Brad Pitt. I'm just Steve Norman. But this is the first time in my life that that has happened. And uh, it was surreal. Screwed me up in the audition. Thanks, guy. Uh, so <laughs> bombed that audition because I was so arrogant afterward. No, I'm joking. But um, yeah, so it's done a lot, you know, being Mr. Negative. And that character uh, is so fun to play because... You know, with anything, it can get kind of boring or flat if you're just one thing. But Mr. Negative, Martin Lee, it was so cool to be able to have the different uh, dimensions to him. That he's nice, that he's kind, that he's compassionate, that he's warm, that he's scared, that he's he doesn't want a secret out, that he wants revenge so hard. There's all these colors to this character. Uh, and I'm just so f happy that... What initially was supposed to be kind of like a, just a character, you know, he's just one of the bad guys, maybe, I don't know if it was supposed to be an intro bad guy or something, but it was definitely not a huge bad guy. They were just kind of like, hey, we'll just introduce him. Turned into this thing where it's like he's, he's two-thirds of a, you know, a tripod of death, if you will, you know? So, uh, super awesome. Very cool. And I'm just, I just, so far the reaction has been great, you know? A lot of fans love it, which initially when, I, when the E3 trailer came out and everybody was, I look at comments religiously, right? I'm not DMs. Don't DM me, people. I don't read the DMs. There's just not, don't, nobody's got time for DMs, but like, but I read comments and I read all the YouTube uh, comments and I'll, I'll be honest, some of them made me scared because you you have some people being like, oh, Mr. Negative, I love him. Dance slots run on it. So cool. They knew him from 2008 when he first started, right? When he first premiered. And then you had a very vocal contingent of people who were like, who's this Asian dude in a suit? <laughs> and I'm like, come on, guys. Is that all I really am? An Asian dude in a suit? So I had this going on for two years, man, of people <laughs> being like, ah, some Asian dude. So you cannot imagine the relief, you know, the relief, the... The, uh, just the relief that people are finally like, oh, Mr. Negative is dope. Because that's all we were trying to do, man, is make Mr. Negative dope. And every day I went on set, I just tried to make this guy dope. I tried to make him as scary as possible. I tried to make him as cool as possible. And everything you see that he's doing, you know, that's obviously me and the animators. Anything too crazy is totally me. 
<laughs> no, but, you know, big team helped. So the fact that people are finally open, people who don't even know the comics are finally open to this random Asian guy in a suit, and now they actually know him, I'm so happy. Yeah, what cool. I'm not happy about is everybody saying, uh, oh, this other Asian guy should be this guy, or Reggie Lee, oh, please. I'm a, you know what? I'm going to be like Eminem. On this podcast, I'm going to say it. I'm going to be like Eminem. I'm going to start beefing with all the Asian-American male actors out there. I'm beefing with you. I can take all y'all. So when people are like, oh, I think this guy would be good. It's like, yeah, I know how Hollywood works. Yes, of course. Everything's out of, out of our hands. But I'm just saying, in my heart of hearts, I'm like, come on, man. I would destroy these dudes. And no, I don't look like half of these dudes. Either half of these dudes are older than me, or half of these dudes are younger and pretty boys. Then you got me, man. You know, <laughs> I'm just trying to get. I'm trying to feed my family. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I talked a lot. I, I don't know if I answered any of your question. No, that was that was great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now a funny question that we like to ask you. Sure. If you could be any character you have played in real life, no. who, who will you be? And you can mix and match. And I can mix and match? Mm-hmm. So, wait, give me an example of mixing and matching. You could have uh, Mr. Negative's powers. Yeah. With the force in your hand. <laughs> and with some of the magic from from the Elder Scrolls no. game. Oh, okay, I got you. I got you. Oh, man. That is a good one. Good lord. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, obviously, I would love to have the Force. <laughs> that would be legit. Uh, I would love to have the Force, and I would love to have Mr. Negative Martin Lee's money, so that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what, I'm going to say, I'm going to be, I would love to be Martin Lee, with Martin Lee's money, but with the Jedi's Force powers, and, uh, and that, I think, about covers it. Oh, and the skills of... The doctor that I played on How to Get Away with, How to Get Away with Murder, <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Because every other role I pretty much died in. I think every other TV show I've ever been in, I die. <laughs> I'm like a Sean Bean of Asian actors. <laughs> One day I'll live. You know, I did live in Spider Man. You know, PS4. So, by the way, we're playing a drinking game. Every time I say you know, take a drink. You're definitely getting hammered. <laughs> so yeah, Martin Lee with the Force. With his money, and with the brains of the ER doctor I played in one episode of How to Get Away with Murder. That's my final answer. All right. All right, now, is there anything else that's coming out that you can talk about, or anything you want to plug in at this time? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, yes, well, I'm going to be in two episodes of Runaways, not as... Not as Martin Lee or Mr. Negative, unfortunately. <laughs> but don't, uh, you know, don't make it, see, somebody take a drink. I said, you know, don't make it too big of a deal of this Runaways thing because I still want to work on other Marvel shows, you know. There, there it is again. I'm also going to be in a Mark Duplass, uh, 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 Ray Romano movie that comes out sometime this year. It's a very cool little role. Uh and I'm very excited about that. That was kind of a dream come true too, because if you're, you know, if you're familiar with Mark Duplass, he is the king of indie movies, comedies. Uh, he's got a four picture deal with Netflix. Incredibly intelligent guy. Him and his brother, are writer directors, big inspirations for me. So to be in a movie uh, with him is also another dream come true. So check that out. It's going to be on Netflix sometime, hopefully, before the year ends. If not, I'll come back on this podcast and advertise. <laughs> All right. Now we come to our last question, and we ask this to all the actors. Any Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, any other social media for the fans to contact you? Absolutely. Please. Well, okay. So I have an official Facebook at facebook.com backslash Steven with a P-H, O-Young, O-Y-O-U-N-G, and try to keep it easy. Twitter is twitter.com backslash Mr., with no period, M-R, Mr. Steven with a P-H, O-Young, so Mr. Steven O-Young, and then my, uh, my Instagram is just instagram.com Steven 
Oh, yeah. With a PH. So you can find me at any of those. I try to keep it real easy. And you can comment on all the stuff. Again, like I said, no offense, DMs don't really like to try to open it up because then it's a whole big bag of now i got to answer whatever, whatever. But if you just comment on my thing, man, I'll get to you. I'll get to you. So I read all the comments. I like all of them. I delete all the haters, <laughs> which thank you. Like, I, I don't have that many. Although you're supposed to have a, a few haters if you get famous, right? So that, that's like a good sign. So bring it, haters. That means I'm getting famous. <laughs> well said. <laughs> all right. Well, that concludes our interview. Thank you, sir, for joining us for this interview. We do how guys appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. And enjoy playing the game, guys. <laughs> All right, everyone, and thank to our viewers for tuning in for this episode of the Ohio Guys. Thank you all. We'll be seeing you all next time. Bye, everyone.